All right, everybody. Right, so in this one, I'm going to show you how I make these little pocket pouches. So it holds three rounds and wet molded leather on the front, stitching plate on the back with some elastic to hold the bullets on the inside. Uh, before I do that, I'll show you what I've just been making in the workshop recently. So I've got some Spartan bipod holsters here, two of the tat long versions. Uh, tops have been wet formed or wet moulded again for the holding the tops of the legs of the bipods in because they have like a square, more square edge on than the standard ones. So one tan, one dark brown. I've done a short version here again for a tack one. Uh, this one has got, or well, the idea is to have a, a skeletal front on it uh, so you can see the bipod on the inside of it. So I've cut a couple of panels out of that one. So that's those that I've got done. I've done one of my well, it's like a row stalker sheath, but a guy wanted one making up for his knife. So uh, luckily it just fits in. What I had to do though was add a, a little bit more leather into the bottom because they're not quite as long, just so it sort of fits in quite nicely. But that's that sorted. Again, dark brown. Uh, then I've got a bunch of Coney kits. So it would probably say a litter of kits. First one is black and white Kirinite, like the swilled effect, uh, with the same, well, a similar sort of, paracord lanyard on the knife and on the uh, neck carry sheath. Kydex one made out of 1.5 mil Kydex. Clips in, nice and solid. Uh, that one's going up for sale. Uh, this one's an ordered one. So this one is with orange uh, G10 that's been sandblasted to give it a bit of a rough effect. Dark brown leather sheath with some orange stitching on that one and an orange lanyard added to the knife as well. Uh, these three are going up for sale, so I've got some glow in the dark, uh, neon, neon starlight glow, I think it is, Kirinite. Uh, green lanyard, green stitching on the sheath, and like I say, these ones are going to be going up for sale shortly. And then one more that's an order, which is a Kony Gits kit zipper. Uh, that one is with a bog oak, stabilised bog oak handle, uh, red liners, stainless um, hardware on it, black sheath with red stitching on that, and this one is actually going to be going out with this pouch. So that's a set together. So I'll get these moved out of the way, and then I can show you how I make these. Right, so the uh, bullet pouch, there we go. Right, it's made out of three bits, well, two bits of leather and a bit of elastic. So, first thing I need to do is cut out a couple of templates that I need for the back of the front. Uh, I've already got some, I've got an idea of what, how big they need to be here. So, these are already dyed veg tan leather. I'm going to have a go with this and see if I can make some out of stuff that's already pre-dyed. I've never used it before for wet moulding. Um, I haven't used it that much at all, to be totally honest, so I'm going to give that a go. But first of all, I need to sort these out. So get me ruler. I've got a, a new cutting wheel. So I'm going to try that. Right, so I'll just put it on. Get my pencil wherever I put that. After searching an hour for a pencil, I managed to find one. So mark it on. Uh, this is 10 centimetres wide. I also use this for making another power tool, but I'm going to do that in the next video. So. But first of all, do this. So I'll line it up on my board. Uh, where's my mark gone? There it is. And cut. So this piece is going to be made for the front. And then I just need to make one for the back piece. So again, just mark, lay it out on the board again. So I'm going to do this section first, so it's fairly straightforward, so I've already got a template, I'm going to put that over the top, and I'm just going to mark top and bottom of each one of these, simple as that, I need the board, and what I'm going to do is just cut in my stitching holes, well, stamp in my stitching holes, I've got one of these Stitching irons, so pricking irons rather, and I've found that the six mil, oh, so rather the six prongs, works perfectly over the top 
of the elastic. So basically it's one either side and four in the centre. So I'll sort that out. So that done. So that's the front and the back cut out and then just need me a bit of elastic. So these, uh, I've already measured them all out. So these gaps are 15 mil apart and I need 25 mil of elastic between each one. A bit of the start and a bit of the finish and I've got these little silver marker pens. So I just mark on it whereabouts the first stitching is going to be and then just go along. So that's one, two, three, four. And then Right, so this piece I need to dye, but this piece I need to wet form first. So I'll just show you quickly how I managed to do that. And then as if by magic, it's all done. So, luckily, here's one I prepared earlier in a good old fashion. So as you can see, it's nicely, it's wet formed. It's quite stiff as well, so that's ready to put the marks around for where the stitching hole is going to be. So the way that I do this, I'll get one of these spacers. Uh, this is the smaller pricking iron, and it's just handy for putting up against the crease line just go all scratch the line into it same on this one and the bottom and then along this side and that seems to be the right sort of width where I want to put my stitching line so I just need to cut those off back onto the wheel So there we go, it's got the groove lines all the way around the edge. So now what I can use now is with me pricking irons again, uh, I'm just going to put all the stitch holes onto the front. Now I've just got to leave these to dry. So that's these two bits ready now for the next step. So what I'm going to do is put this elastic and I'm going to sew it onto the back plate here. So it's going to be stitched on. I've already marked it up for the intervals where I want to stitch it. Uh, I'm going to use some bright orange thread so it just stands out uh, and makes it a little bit easier for it to pick up on the camera. So I'll just thread my needles and we'll get started. Right, so on this one, I'm going to start stitching from the bottom. So, second hole in, push the needle through. I'm going to go back one and then up to the top and then go back down to the bottom again and tie it off at the bottom. Uh, the reason I do that, just so it's nice and secure on the thread, uh, I'm not doing like a full saddle stitch where I'm tying a knot because what I've noticed is that it can pull the elastic through slightly. It just looks a bit, um, it just stops it looking neat. 
but I'll stay it at the top and I'll tie it at the bottom, then I'll seal it on. Uh, I've got a new little thread zapper, so it just melts the end of the thread in nice and neat. You can do this with a lighter or anything like that, but what I found is this little doodah. I got it off of Amazon. I saw it on one of the other uh, leather makers on YouTube, and I thought, yeah, that'll be a bit handy. So, right, I'll just put it in the clamp, and I can get started. Right, just get the thread, just trim it off. There we go. Right, so what I've got is this little thread zap two. And press the button, it's battery operated. One's a tip up, and then just melts it in. There we go. So it just flattens it off sticks it all together and now that should be all locked in place. Sorted. Right. I'm going to be making these for a 308. So I've got three, well I've got a set of five blanks. No primers in, no powder, just a case and a bullet. There we go, fit in nice and neat, and I need to sort out how long the case needs to be at the front. So, as you can see, it's quite long. It's about as long as what the bullets are. Yeah, so I need to cut them about to back to about there. Put in thumbnail. Now I'm going to sand them off and they're going to be chamfered slightly, so they're going to be a bit of a slight angle. So I'll put them onto my grinder and then I'm just going to take off the excess what I don't need on this and then line it up and see if it works. Almost there, just lost a couple of jobs. So, first one, burnishing. I'm gonna do these edges, just dampen them down with a wet sponge. Then with the burnishing tool, 
give them a rub. While these have been drying off, um, I've just been doing some file work on the spine of a knife. So that's done and that can get sent off for heat treating. So I'll just get this done. I do need to let it dry off again. I think I've mentioned before in one of my videos where if I try and, because what I do with the wax is obviously heat it up. It sort of wrinkles the edge up when it's damp and it doesn't make a very nice job. So once this is done, back into the heat cabinet. Well, there we go, it's all done. Uh, I just give the wax a bit of a buff up to finish off with. Uh, put three rounds in it. These are 308 cases and bullets. They are all blanks. Um, and there we go, pocket pouch all sorted. I also did, while I was making that one in the background, I was making one for some smaller rounds. So these are ones for two, two, threes. So these are just simple little pouches that you can put three rounds in, just slip them into your pocket, just keep them all together and keep them safe. Uh, but I'll show you a few close-up shots now. So if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. Uh, hopefully I should have another video up for next week making a five bullet pouch to go onto your belt. Uh, but in the meantime, thank you very much, and I'll see you later.